Welcome back to episode four at Prop by the Bar. And Mike, I've been so surprised about how many people are watching our two favourite things, drinking wine and talking about property. Mainly about the property life. Yeah, yeah, but we're really grateful for everybody that does and we hope you get a lot out of it. And I just want to have a couple of, throw a few thank yous out there as well. Uh, Chris Bryan of Moo Media, who sits behind the camera, who does a great job for us every week. Really appreciate it, Chris. You're doing a fantastic job. We'd also like to thank Johnny Helmer, the Salador, which is where we film this every week. Um, and we have one more shout out. There is a colleague of ours in the real estate industry, Simon Jarman, who is a absolute principal of this industry. Um, he has, um, in recent weeks, suffered some health hiccups, and we want to just wish him and his family the best and a speedy recovery. Because, uh, Simon, you're in all our thoughts. Yeah, get well, Simon. It's uh, been such an interesting time. So every time we film Prop by the Bar at the moment, it's like the market has changed week to week. It does. Like, it it's does. just, it's hard to fathom. But we're filming these a month apart for viewers and it's like a whole clean slate every time. Yeah. Well, the last two episodes, we've talked about the inquiry levels. We expect them to go up as yeah. cases come down. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what's happened. Yep. Yeah. 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 COVID cases. Sorry. So and that's exactly what's happened. So we've seen inquiry over the last two weeks as now Geelong is COVID free, essentially. No, no active cases. Um, and we've seen inquiry over the last couple of weeks go through the roof. Yep, and we know that I think today uh, the state average was about 10 or 12 um, yeah. cases for the state. So for viewers out there, that's the place where we are at the moment as we're filming this. And um, it seems to me like there's um, a lot more fluid movement from, from people thinking about property and starting to get back into business, not from just Geelong and regional, but also from Melbourne. Yeah, well, they're, they're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel now. Yeah. So they can see the, the way out of there. Yep. And the amount of inquiry that's coming from outside the region has been at record record highs. Yeah, I know that some agents have said that they're starting to sell property, sight unseen, whether they're using a conveyancer or a friend or someone or a solicitor to come through and do an inspection of property, yeah. buying the property subject to a final inspection, um, sight unseen. And yeah. that's just amazing. Yep, and we've, start, we've seen some good results over right across the board, both yeah, residential are. and commercial. Um, and since last time we met, we've had the introduction of traditional auctions come yeah. back into play. So that's starting to provide some interesting uh, results. Welcome back, because auctions to me is the funnest part of the weekend. I'm the, I'm the silly guy that runs around all the auctions and stands at the back of the crowd with my dog and watches how they all go. I find it is the best street entertainment you could ask for. Oh, it's you. Yeah, it's yeah, me. Yeah. I, and I do throw yeah. the dummy bids. But uh, no, um, that you've had some great outcomes of auctions. You, you your, yeah. own, your own agency this week um, uh, sold a, a market property that I think is actually a really good indicator where the market's at. Yeah, so that was 11 uh, Chesterfield caught in Newtown, so exclusive little pocket, um, but certainly just a redevelopment uh, piece of land, 739 square metres. Yeah. Most of the interest come from a redevelopment. Yeah. Um, but we had a reserve in the low 800s, 840, I think would have brought it up on the day. And uh, it sold under competition, under the hammer at 912,000. Yeah. So that result wouldn't have been um, possible had we not been transitioned Transition. back into a you know, traditional auction method. Yeah, yeah, and um, I think for viewers to understand, this 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 pocket of Newtown, it's the river end of Newtown. Um, Newtown's quite a long, elongated suburb that runs all the way from the river down to Packenham Street and Latrobe Terrace. And it, so it's, it, it has different pockets of value. And the, this is really interesting because it's the, the back end that's always been sort of undervalued, that's sort of been looked over from the rest of Newtown. And this this, this sale returned a rate, of an underlying, I, I would call it a land value rate of 12.35 a square metre, yeah. which is just, you know, in my mind, such a big jump on where we were yeah. previously we were talking eight hundred to a thousand dollars a square meter in that pocket, and at twelve thirty five a square meter, that's a big jump um, for the values there, and it's and it's just indicative of what prices are doing. We're finding properties that have really, really um, the higher end or the medium to higher end properties are just going really, really strong. Yeah, well, we're seeing uh, property in all price brackets actually perform really well. We know that stock compared to this time last year is well down, but yeah. numbers are actually up. So we've seen. Um, Clearance rates, since we've returned to traditional auctions, clearance rates are 73%, wow, which is good, way up there. And your uh, sale prices after an auction um, generally is within one or two weeks anyhow. The, the rule of thumb is anything over 65% clearance rates is a yeah. growth market. Yeah. Right. So it, we've got 73%, we're in a growth market. That's hard to imagine. I mean, and that, that growth market equates to, I think we're looking at the June quarter stats. 
Yep. Uh, Geelong house price has changed on the previous June quarter up by 3.74%. Yep. So, and those stats, they take a, a little while to come through and they've just come through at 3.74%. Yep. And, and that's fantastic. And units changes, the unit value changes have jumped up to 7.7%, mm. which, is, which is fantastic in unit values. Outstanding. And when you compare that to what's happening in Metro, they're poles apart. Yeah. So, you know, we've, we've been uh, four months of that Mm. you know, uh, financial year under a pandemic and we've still had exceptional growth. And there's, there's another sale I want to call out that's just happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bell Moral. Bell Moral. Yeah. yeah, and to my mind, this is a beautiful home, um, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, I think. Sits another on exclusive top. pocket. Never sells. Yeah. You never see a, uh, anything for sale on Belmora Crescent. And, and again, for viewers, Belmora Crescent is located in a really creme de la creme spot on the cliff tops of Cariah Bay. And it has this beautiful view where it looks out over the bay. You've got Eastern Beach out there. Yeah, and you can see the Geelong. ships coming. Yeah. It looks towards Geelong, which is just a beautiful spot. Um, I think it would be, you'd have to say, that's Eastern views over the bay. And you don't get that too, too often. So it's, it's absolutely brilliant. And um, it's 3.3 to 3.4 sale price. We it wasn't all that long ago that anything over two million wowed us. Yeah. And how many would happen? Not yeah, many. It's so, happening every week yeah. now. So we, we've seen some great results residentially, but we've also seen some outstanding results in the last week commercially. Yeah. So one uh, sale that, you know, I had to s take a second look was industrial, uh, industrial court in Breakwater. Yeah. The uh, Hino site, yep. or the tenant is Hino. $187,000 per annum return on that property. That was an investment play. It showed 6.5% yield to the investor, which is, if you look at the market, where you're going to put your money. This had a really good, strong national tenant um, with a really good long-term lease in place for it. And I think it was a recently signed five-year term yep. to run. Um, and the investors just gobbled it up. 6.5% that's, that's is a great a, return for that's money. That's just a set, of, set and forget. Yeah. Like we've seen just today, the, the uh, RBA of how tight on interest rates at uh, 0.25% and I'm seeing commercially rates at the moment between two and two and a half percent which is I haven't seen rates on a commercial le level at that, at that amount. No, no. And, and industrial place breakwater is, is not what you wouldn't say it's in the prime of breakwater or anything like that it's it's a it's a good spot but it's let's just say it's, the underlying land value really wasn't reflected in the sale price of 2.875 it was really investment play on that yeah. on that lease um there's another really good sale happened out of bridge street in newtown yeah good little pocket yeah um really good spot we've got we're talking an industrial showroom vacant possession yeah time. only 93 square meters and what did it sell for Five hundred and forty thousand. Five thousand eight hundred a square meter yeah and that's that just next level high and we we keep talking about the strength of industrial um and but that's just jumping in value yeah month so on month darcy so. jarman sold that one so shout out to boys well great job because that represents a brand new cap in the market for that yeah. sort of stuff it's the highest sale we've got of that sort of thing um it does it is industrial showing it is close to the cbd yeah. it is better than a lot of the stuff out there but geez that i i remember um they, when they first sold those ones off the plan, they were about 250000 That was only about five years ago. So they've had over a 100% increase in value and capital yeah, incredible. value. Incredible. It's incredible. Incredible. Um, it's indicative of the stats. Yeah. What we've seen is another 3% increase on realestate.com in terms of inquiry over the last week, which has had three or four consecutive weeks of increases. It's amazing. And we're actually at historical high historical searches highs. for property on realestate.com period. Yeah, and that's so, that's what the agents are all saying. Yeah, Absolutely. so um, it's good times. All the all the indicators from the regional yep. um, interest that we've been talking about over previous episodes, it's there. It's, it's there. there. Now, Gareth, I believe there was a uh, a news article during the week that caught your eye that had you feverishly ring in every commercial agent in, in town. It was. You want yep. to tell us about it? Yeah, Mike, this one had my blood boiling a little bit, so I might have jumped on the phone and called a few of my friends in all the agencies. Now, yep. I have good contacts around Geelong, and I spoke to the top five agencies that lease the majority of retail commercial in the, in the Geelong CBD. Um, now, every single one of them have reported huge demand for for uh, for commercial property at the moment, they've got really they have a limited number of listings though, as which is reflected right through the market with everything. But the main thing was this this little article talks about the 37 ghost shops in the CBD, and and really um, 
talks up the fact that we've got a vacancy problem in the Geelong CBD. Now I want to call, I'm not Media Watch, but I want to call out that that's not quite factually correct. Yep. So there's, I spoke to these agencies and there's only 10 properties for lease at the moment. In fact, every property- On the retail front? On the retail front. Yep. Every property in this photograph is actually leased or under offer for lease at the time of this yep. article. Now, um, look, we all are worried that retail is gonna be a problem. Right, and we do. We we're wondering if, when the job keeper finishes, where retail is going to um, really blow out. Okay, but we haven't seen it yet. And yeah. to, to prophesize that it's going to happen based on the fact of what's happening in Melbourne or other markets is just factually wrong. We've actually got so many new businesses springing up and moving down to regional Victoria because of the housing and because of everything else we've got to offer down here. That they're actually soaping up some of this demand and some of these vacancies. And as you rightly put, 37 shops, even if we had 37 vacant shops, if this was correct, um, that would represent two or three yeah. percent of the entire Geelong The interesting thing, during, anyway. during lockdown one, we actually saw commercial sales go up. Yeah. During lockdown two, we've seen leasing market go two or threefold from where it was yeah. pre-COVID. So if anything, the actual leasing market's improved under COVID. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah, for us, that was that was a bit of a surprise when I saw that. Yeah, myself, look, if, you, if you're going to print this sort of stuff, I just want to really impress on you to talk to people in the industry that work in the industry rather than quoting people that don't because it's factually incorrect that there's that these shops were all for lease or vacant or ghost shops, as you've said. But, Mike, let's put that to bed. Yep. We've got a great we're, interview we're today. Special guest. Yep. Developer of the, uh, the highest building currently in Geelong. Yep. You know him well. Fantastic fella. Welcome, James Morphy. Today we've got joining us James Morphy, a distinguished businessman in Geelong, someone who's been around in Geelong for a very long time under the business name Winter and Taylor, um, a long history in Geelong from a family, and now one of Geelong's most prominent developers um, and property gurus of Geelong. Welcome, James. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, James. Thanks for joining us. Well, I guess if we can just wind back, can you tell us about your journey from car dealer principal to property developer? Uh, it's a long, long road, a long road. Uh, we really all started, like I was in, engrossed in the car dealership uh, from when I was 20, started there and loved it, loved it. Started as a part-time job, ended up full-time job. But I bought the business off my father in 2002. Uh, what, what, what sort of cars were you selling when you first started? Were they like the, the XY oh, Holdens or? And oh no. VLs. VLs? VL Commodore. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, VN. Gee, there's some rolling oldies now. <laughs> Wish I'd kept a few of them. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so I started there, 2000, oh, when was that? That was 95. Uh, 2002, I bought the dealership off my father. Yep. Um, and it was actually in 2005. It was uh, Regional Development Victoria, a lady named Cathy, uh, came to me with a design of uh, Mercer Street, of how they wanted it to look. And she actually said that they'd had some been in consultation. And our block of land was the best block of land in Geelong for a high rise development for dense. I remember that time, yeah, right. but 2005 was two years into me being in the industry and they had coined that whole location the western wedge mm. and it was you know really fixated in beautifying that main entry into geelong so i think they were um, really trying to encourage yeah, you know, done landholders a, they did a lot so, of planning work where they yeah. they built the the heights didn't they from from really high density down yeah. to low density all, yeah, all the way down no, to yeah. create like a promenade type entrance to geelong wasn't it that's right yeah, yeah exactly so our our block was uh, resigned yep. um, without a height limit, um, but it was too early. It was 2005. Geelong wasn't ready for high rise. Um, and I remember I was... those days. They were the bad old days. They were yeah. the days where I remember working for Quarter Mentha, and they were realising all these properties on the waterfront that had, that had gone under. And yep. we were taking to the market. We were giving advice that they could only take four apartments to the market at a time because mm. the market couldn't support any more than that on the market. Mm. It was a terrible time. Yeah, shocking. So it was probably a bit before um, 
Now, it was well before Geelong needed a high rise. Um, but I, I knew that I was always babysitting the land with yeah. the car dealership. So uh, I just waited, watched the market. Uh, we then, there was a, the, the block opposite us, 100 Mercer Street, was compulsorily acquired. That was in about 2011. Yeah. Uh, which forced us to find a new home for our Isuzu truck dealership. So yeah. that's when we purchased the old Isuzu, the old Bunnings store out in Karai. Uh, and that, that meant I could take the panel shop, which was in town on the prime site, out to Karai. So that yeah. was 2014. So it's interesting you went out to Karai because that, that, that site there, the old Bunnings site, a lot of people looked at that and thought, what the hell are we going to do with this big old shed? And you've taken, you've cut it into the front half into car yards and a, and a sales room, and then you've got the middle part is a um, a truck service yep. business, and then at the back is a panel workshop, and one of the biggest panel workshops going around at, at that. So you and, and from what I hear, from what I'm told, is that that truck service part is one of the the most busiest truck servicing facilities in Victoria, and the sale yard is also performing at, at national like level. Incredible, incredibly well. Like we bought when we bought that. Um, we anticipated our sales would grow, and Isuzu always say go one street back, where I like to be one yeah. street forward. Yeah. Um, so it was a big step. Know, it was a big, big step. step yeah. It was ballsy too because there was a there was a hungry jacks in the corner, yeah. and you that that um, I think because of the ring road and other things was no longer viable. Yeah. And you bought that site to an incredibly high value, and then turned into a sale yard. But that only just facilitated the rest of the business to to be more. Productive, didn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. You, you saw it for a much more holistic approach, which I take my hat yeah. off. Yeah. So Isuzu from Japan came over and they said, "How have you tripled your sales in service parts and truck sales?" And they they had to turn their model upside down and work out. They were more interested in the panel shop working with the truck dealership yeah. Yeah, right. because it was a non-competitive uh, business that could pay the rent and yeah. subsidise it, so it became a lot more efficient. And our cost per truck sold actually came down. So no time brain. goes by, you've, you've got this Azuzu dealership going well, you've got your areas there. You've seen the, the collapse of apartments along the waterfront in Geelong. Yes. Right? There was and a number of them, wasn't you've there? You've seen the there carnage. Was it was absolutely Pierpoint, carnage. Edgewater, the Promenade, yeah. um, the Yarra Street ones, the yes. Tesla Hotel, I think yep. they all were problematic, weren't they? They all yep. got yeah. into And we trouble. had other people try and do development and they could never get to the scale you ended up getting to. And we had Bob Garton, your old boss, he, yep. he took, what did he get to, eight storeys? Eight storeys at Cherry and Hub yep. Street, yep. And, and, and was able to do a dense, high density apartment. And even when Bob did that, he found it very difficult that a lot of people ran up against him. And also a lot of your big banks and your big um, nationals outside Geelong said, apartments can't be done in Geelong. Hmm. Apartments can't be done. And, and the whole theory around property was, everything works in Geelong except apartments. Hmm. Except James Morphy comes along and decides to build 21 storeys of apartments. <laughs> Can you yeah. talk us through where that come from, where, where I guess you got the confidence to say, yep, this is something I want to well, put the, together? The panel shop had moved down to Cryer, yeah. so we had this free block. So I thought, it's, if there's ever a time yep. that I can investigate this, is now. We, we decided that the best way to go forward was actually to go backwards and have a look at what went wrong with everything along yep. the foreshore. Why did they go broke. Why, did, uh, why didn't they sell? Um, what prices did they sell for? Just what were the problems? What was the overreaching problem that you, that you got? Um, uh, a lot of them were either too big to justify the cost mm. or they're very expensive builds that don't uh, yield a result yep. for anyone or they didn't have views. I remember when they went belly up that they we were doing the work for Cordamenta and at that time the we were looking at what they were selling them for. They were selling for around six and a half to seven thousand a square meter mm. of rate. And they were over very big apartments, so they were quite big numbers and they, they just struggled. They really yeah. struggled. And then um, you came to the market and so what rates did you end up going at the market at? Was it between eight and ten and eleven thousand, wasn't it? Oh no, it's a little bit less than that. Yeah, right, a bit less, yeah. A bit less. So, um, so the market hadn't moved much. That was 2007, and you, yeah. you, you started sales, pre-sales of what, 2018, 2019? 2017. Era? Yeah, so yeah. we had a fair bit of time between two, mm. nearly 10 years. Yes. And, and in that time, the growth hadn't been, had been marginal in actually what the market would accept yeah. for apartments. And I think that tells a story, Mike, of why 
boat, they didn't survive on the waterfront in the original thing. They just mm. construction costs too high. Yeah. Always better exactly. to learn to other people's mistakes, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we studied every, yeah. every single apartment block yeah. and what we felt we could do better. Mm -hmm. um, and look, the real key thing was I, there was a friend of mine who introduced me to Barry Morris, so Morris Property Group, who was a fantastic mentor. And he said, look, I'll be your mentor. He had, at that time, built 66 apartments, um, high-rise apartments. Uh, he'd had a, a crane on the Gold Coast for 20 years straight, so he wasn't a, a fly-by-nighter. Um, <laughs> and he was a really good bloke. He was very open, very honest. He's, he's black or white, there's no grey. Um, straight shooter, and we got on really well. And I went and had a look at his apartments in Queensland, and they're a little bit different to what we would want here. Yeah. Um, but he said, look, come to Canberra. He said, I think it's a very similar market to Geelong. So I took Colin, my architect, uh, to Canberra, and we had a look, and there's, it's funny enough to say, there's a building that looks very similar to Miramar in Canberra. Yeah. Um, it's funny to say that. I've never heard the, the, the city, what we call the graveyard with lights, being compared to the beautiful surrounds of Geelong. Come on. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but I think, yeah. you know, my thoughts are, if you can make it work in Canberra, we can yeah. make it work in Geelong. Probably. At least yeah. we've got water views. Yeah. So yeah. North facing North water facing views. North facing water views. Yeah. So 112 apartments. Yep. 21 levels. 21 levels. So currently the tallest building in Geelong. Yes. And I believe all sold out prior to the building being completed. We sold 70% in the first three months. Wow. But you had we to, sold, didn't you? In one weekend, we sold what most agents said we would sell as an entirety. Yeah. So what I find fascinating is that you had to, because and, and it, the whole project hinged on it, because the banks weren't backing you, were they? There was no, the, the, the lenders were making it very tough. They were asking, what, 140% debt coverage, 80% pre-sales, really, really tough time to be trying to build anything, especially in Geelong, especially apartments in Geelong. I mean, that would have been, how do you go to banks and, and get that across the line? Well, look, look having Barry and the experience there, uh, without his experience, I wouldn't have got finance. Uh, yeah, right. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, they also came back uh, halfway through you know, the sales process and said, look, you know, we were just kidding about how much money we were going to give you. We'll give you less. That was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then they offer you all these weird and wonderful ways to finance at 14, 15% for the balance and things. Oh, but I didn't like that stuff. Um, and that's when a mate of mine, uh, Marcus Birrell, uh, I invited him into the project. And it actually accelerated our plans. So we didn't have to worry about finance. And we actually purchased more real estate around us to protect our plots. I'm going to get to that because yeah. I know you've got bigger plans than just one, hmm. right? But uh, yeah. getting back to this Miramar project, as Mike was saying, 21 stories, 112 apartments. You know, what was the take up in Geelong? Did people love these things or what, what happened? How was that take accepted in this marketplace? Um, look, yeah, look, it was good. It really helped having Morris there, uh, yeah. Morris Property Group. They could see that, you know, the biggest thing with this, this whole project was everyone sat there and said, you're going to go broke or you're never going to do it. Um, the council actually treated us as though What's we were never going to do it. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You know, yeah. It's one of these things you'll get a permit and you'll say you're going to do it and you'll sell it off to someone and it'll never happen. So a lot of people thought that way. We were very cautious about way, the way we um, enacted with the market. I was there. I, I, interacted with 95% of the buyers. And I think that was a bit of a key because you know, they knew me, I knew them, um, you know, and I was going to do it. Did you think it helped? Because I know that there was another development on the go at the same time, the Mercer, which was yeah. run by Matthew Sang, another great Geelong businessman who's you know, has put a lot of back into this community. And, and Matthew was running his development basically neck and neck with yours, but was also experiencing very much the same hardships that you were going through. Did the two of you ever get together and um, try and bounce things off each other, or what was it like with another one going on at the same time? Did it make it harder or worse? Oh, no, no, or better? it was uh, uh, probably better. Yeah. Because people had something to compare us with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so no, it was, it was all right. And it probably set up the story of what the future for Geelong CBD held as well, I imagine. Yeah. What part right. of the development when you sort of thought, yep, yeah, I've got here, I've got it? Um, 
oh, I would say after the first weekend of sales, yeah. uh, we sold 32 on that yeah. weekend, which was just huge. Um, and I thought, this is going to happen. And that's just this unprecedented. Is, yeah. What, yeah, really what is your breakup of own occupiers versus investors? Oh, I'd probably, now, now that everyone's in yes, or so, yeah. settled, I'd say it'd be 70 to 75% owner occupiers. Oh, that's great. fantastic. That's that. great. Or, yeah. or it'd probably be a bit high because some people have bought them, they're renting them out, and then they're going to move into them. What's <laughs> next? What's next? Well, we put in for a planning permit yesterday. Yep. Um, we've had a long You heard road. it first here, folks. You heard <laughs> it first here. <laughs> <laughs> we put in for, yeah, yesterday yeah. for a planning permit for Oriana, number yep. two. Yeah, right. Um, so that's 26 floors. Ooh, um, yep. So, yeah, that's, how many uh, apartments? 128. Fantastic. Yeah, so, yeah, and we've learnt from the first one. Mm -hmm. We've we've got a bit of feedback and things, and yep. uh, yeah, we'll improve. We'll just keep improving. And, and where where does that sit in orientation to to Mirama? Uh, diagonal. Yeah. Diagonal. So, um, sort of where the old Kia dealership was. Yep. You're trying to get a catchphrase to take off. It's called the COVID change. Mike came up with it. We love it. The yeah. COVID change. You can yeah. use that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for coming down and joining us at episode three of Pop by the Bar. My Thanks pleasure. Thank Ever-changing landscape. Look forward to seeing Second Tower. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. So it is that time now to go straight to uh, property of the week. We've mixed it up a little bit. We've we gone have. for a residential flavour and a residential property that comes with 150 years uh, worth of history. Absolutely. Now, I understand you got a sneak peek this week. I did, and, and I'm very grateful for Dale Whitford from uh, Whitford Property who got me through on Monday. And I was so glad to get through it because it's such a beautiful building. It's it's elegant. It's It's got heritage significance that's just abundant and it's it's beautiful. So it's got three street frontages. Yep, so we're talking 350 Ryrie Street. Sorry, 350 Ryrie Street. Do yourself a favour, have a look at some of these photos online for it because it's a beautiful building. Um, three street frontages, as I was saying, it's got yeah. 1,600 square metres of land. It's over near the hospital precinct, so the medical precinct, yeah. and that's quite um, relevant because it was actually built for a doctor in 1870, the name Bellevue. Um, which is obviously comes from the French end of the end of the Hundred Year Wars. And in fact, Napoleon was captured. We in, are a yeah. little bit of a history lesson. Napoleon yeah. was captured in September of 1870, yeah. and the Bellevue was the hotel, which was the final last stand for the people when the Prussians surrounded Paris. So that's where the name comes from. But it was a significant time in history for the world. It's also a significant time in history for Geelong. So the Geelong Township was actually built up on the hill near. Um, near this property and around this property and down towards down towards the, the bay. So it overlooked the bay near where Karaya Villa is. Um, and you've got the, one of the other properties that's nearby is, is one of the oldest properties of Geelong is where the first mayor of Geelong lived, which is built around the corner. So there is, there is um, a whole lot of heritage significance to this location where this property is built. Um, and it sits at a really big prime spot of 1,600 square metres. It's, you walk into this property and you've got this garden, this big, beautiful landscape garden. And then you've got this um, brick, 1870s Geelong, I think it was um, Warren Ponds quarried brick, right? Because in Warren Ponds there used to be the where they made all the brick for most of these old buildings in Geelong. And you walk in through these big curved archways and you've got like a lion's head looking at you from the top, which is beautiful made. And you walk in and then the, the elegance just hits you because it's been um, updated, renovated, and it, there's not a crack in it. And she's beautiful. You've got big timber stairwell that goes up with, with, with um, stained glass windows at the top looking down at you. You've got uh, four metre ceilings with decorative cornices, um, ceiling roses. There's a couple of things. I've seen the photos and I think it looks magnificent. It's oh. been modernised in, inside. Yeah. The most impressive thing or the thing that I loved the most was that billiard room. Billiard room is amazing. I don't know if any of our viewers have ever been to the Geelong Club billiard room, but it looks just like that. It, it's got these high vaulted ceilings with stained glass windows again. The ceilings must be you know, five or six metres high. The, the light above the pool table is suspended on big cables from those ceilings and you can see the big truss beams through there. It, it's just beautiful building. And um, my favourite part of it, Michael, you'll laugh, my favourite part is the toilets 
at the back, and I know you're going to laugh, I'm a heritage buff, yeah. but I suspect that these to toilets could have been one of the original ever plumbed in Geelong. I know that the, the Geelong, yeah, Geelong Club, Club had some of the first at 1856, 1860, the first in Geelong, and the old gentlemen yeah. every morning before work, they would come past the Geelong Club to help relieve themselves on the way to work. But uh, So it was a very popular place, the Geelong Club then, but this house being such a prime um, house built by one of the, one of the um, Prior, one of the real movers and shakers of Geelong um, had its own plum toilets, and, there's, yeah. and they're still there in Heritage listed. So it's 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 and it's got the other thing I loved about it. Um, a big old beautiful timber stables at the back with the cobblestones and the ground and that little hot fireplace where the, um, the, the, the servants would have worked to keep the horses uh, clean and, and to look after the carriages and everything. It, it's just beautiful in so abundance of heritage. What, what price are we expecting? This has to be in the threes. They're quoting three to 3.5. Yeah. Who knows, this could have even go any harder than that. This is a beautiful property. Pretty unique. Um, yeah. yeah, it's unique. I don't really want to go and put a number on it because um, someone's going to fall in love with this property and buy it for what it is, and they should. And I hope they stay there for a long time and enjoy it because it's one of those marvellous properties. It's got updated kitchens, updated bathrooms. Um, it's got huge bedrooms. And some of the bedrooms, you get views of the Yang. So it's, it, it's a cracker. I well, look forward to seeing a sold sticker on that. Great to see what the result is. Anyone wants to uh, find any more out about 350 Rory Street, uh, contact our Whitford at Whitford Property. We're just about out of time for today, but um, what a great interview we had with James. Oh, he's a mar marvellous fellow. He's done a great job. I can't wait to see Tower 2. We are a couple of hours away from uh, the budget. Yeah. Interesting yeah. to see what we've had a couple of little... I guess sneak peeks to what will be there. Yeah, there's going to be there's quite a few things in there that's going to be really significant for Geelong. It's going to help Geelong maybe kick along a bit harder. Yeah. We'll just see what exactly comes out. But some of the things that they've sort of forecast is tax cuts brought forward. So um, for the average family, that's about a five thousand uh, dollar a year saving. Um, first home buyers grants have been extended, or look like they will be extended and expanded. Which is um, for Geelong. In being in regional is just anything fantastic. regional yeah. with that lower price point below that 750 mark that's really going to help yeah. um, your home buyers builder scheme has also been extended um, that's a $25,000 additional grant for home builders that this look like, looks like it's going to be extended and that's a very very significant for the estates which at the moment are really running off the back of those grants um, to get them going in post COVID so it's really significant and that'll be good for jobs in Geelong um, I think they're also going to extend that scheme so it's up to 900,000 with house and land combined. So that's also going to open it up to some of the bigger um, purchases of the bigger blocks. I know that some people have problems getting it under that yep. So with the house and land package. So that's a good one. The other thing that's um, really interesting for Geelong is the we've got a massive need for social housing and they've um, the forecast that social housing will be a big part of this budget. And I really hope it is, putting my um, director's hat on for Lazarus community house, the homeless house um, in Geelong. We need social housing around Geelong, so it'd be really good to see some of that. Um, the um, homeland rates could also come down as well. So they're predicting that homeland rates might fall below that 2% threshold. Wow. Yeah. So, so there's quite a lot of things in the, in the forecast yeah. coming that could really impact how property prices are well, we'll probably be talking again tomorrow about how much it's changed. Yeah, again. How much it's changed again. But, you know, property across the board has been, uh, for Geelong, has been really, really strong the last 12 months. We saw some really surprising results, I would say, despite lockdowns. We saw uh, values rose by 22.4% in East Geelong in the last 12 months, uh, followed by manifold heights at 157 and Geelong at 15.3. There is one other thing I'm going to mention that um, the recent changes to the Banking Royal Commission. Um, so if, they, if that changes the way that they're legislating trying to change it, they take the onus of responsibility off the bank and they put that back into the hands of the applicant. That's going to change the way that the banks look at lending. Yeah. Um, that We've said every week that the biggest problem and the biggest risk to this market is access to capital and access to finance. Um, this could take the brakes off that. It's going to take a while for that policy to get down to the bottom level to increase lending, but so I think that's one know. of the most important things that could happen and I really hope the government get that through because that's going to you know, get rid of those Royal Commission rules, um, get people back to business, get allow access to capital. Um, it's going to be, that, that's really going to help us kick on with this economy. Great. Well, that is all the time we've got today. Um, we'd like to thank our special guest, James Morphy, for joining us. John Helmer at uh, Geelong Salador, as, as always. Um, if you have any uh, questions,